Hi, I'm Rebecca Brand, and I'm gonna show you how to make an N95 DIY mask with a bra. Oh, and I have other designs too. Let's check these out. Here's the bra cup I used. I was designing around an N95 mask with a piece of metal. This is a fastener in office supplies that I could mimic this piece of metal in an N95 mask. For the straps of the mask, what was best was a bra strap, which is completely adjustable to your head. Isn't that amazing? Here's the bra on the inside, and I had sewn a fabric on the outside, a very thin fabric because with the bra, it's thick enough. I cut a coffee filter into a size that I can use here and dispose of it every day in case it gets boogers on it. And in that coffee filter, I sprinkle a little bit of citric acid because my research has shown that citric acid is the viral repellent in an N95 mask. Citric acid deactivates viruses because it creates a low pH environment that viruses don't like to live in. They also might add powdered zinc to their formula, but citric acid in my research was the one that I could create in my home. That was the best choice. And so with it on, I just tighten and I pull my hair out. And then you adjust the metal piece in your nose and press on the bottom so it fits your face. The reason I like the bra best for the N95 is it has a shape that's gonna stay. I also have a pattern without that that you can do with just fabric. Here is a pattern you can screenshot this if you like. Five and a half inches up one side and five and a half inches down the other. And of course you're using fabric, so you gotta fold your fabric and you cut it like that because you're gonna to wanna to end up with four pieces of this to sew together. And I bought a piece of cellulose that I put and cut in the same pattern to go within this bra. This one was viscous, but viscous and cellulose are about the same thing. This is gonna give it some body to hold its shape. And as you sew it together, you can see there's darts involved and there's a pocket here, like just like you'd put elastic in, so you can put your office fastener. Look how easy this is gonna bend. Just like that. And once it's inside, every mask will now be the shape of your nose. This mask doesn't have any of the cellulose or viscous in it. It holds its shape because it's made with a thick fabric like denim. It has the same pattern. So go around the underwire part of your bra. This bra size is a 36C. So you can go to thrift stores to get this. I get smaller sizes for your kids. We want to take the underwire out. So I'm cutting to get in there. I'm just using some hair scissors I had in the house to do it. Clip, clip away. And out she comes. It's a little tight in the beginning, but once you get a little bit out, it comes out really easy. There you go. This part is going to be the bottom of your mask. And the way this is going to wear on your face is the loose fabric that's going to be on the exterior. It's just going to be the natural shape of the bra because your face is going to go on the natural inside of the cup. Make sure you wash your bras with bleach before you start this project. And then we're going to take a measuring tape and we're going to go about three inches from the base of the bottom of our bra. And so I'm marking there. I mark at the three inch point. And then from the bottom, I'm going to measure about one and a quarter. And I'm going to put a dot there. And just like in trigonometry, we're going to connect the dots. A little math for the day. Now we're going to sew that together. I'm going to sew this by hand because you may not have a sewing machine in your house. I make the knot and I insert the needle at the bottom. And what you want is this to be super strong because this is where all the stress is going to be. So I'm going around again and again and again over and over, and now I'm gonna pull it through the other side. And I'm using a cutting board because it's just like a little thimble. Bing! And now we're gonna go up the sides, and it can be any kind of stitch you want. A sewing machine is a lot faster and easier, but whatever, and just keep going. And when you get to the end, you pull it through, and this is how you finish. You're sewing, in case you didn't know that. You gotta make a knot so it does not unravel. Here we go, bing, finger in there, inside loop, dunch them, and cut. Okay, so we have our hand-stitched line, yay. And so now we're gonna flip it inside out. That's what the seam looks like. 
So I'm going to check to see how it feels along the bottom of my face. It's going from here to here. If that was too big, you would have just made another vector and stitched some more. But that fits me, so I'm going to cut off the edge. Don't cut where you sewed. Give it a good quarter inch. You don't want it to unravel. Ah, careful, careful, careful. <sighs> that always makes me nervous. I could have had a little mistake there. And for facial symmetry, I need to have this side cut the same as this. Oh, it's going to look weird. Time to go to the mirror, and you want to make sure it's going to fit tight there. So I'm pulling it like that because that's where one of the elastic straps is going to be. And with that tight, and the metal piece here, is it going to fit my face? <laughs> it worked. With the straps here and the metal piece on my nose, it's perfect. Yay. So now with a piece of thin fabric, we're going to make the cover for our N95 homemade mask. I use a cutting board and I place my mask right on the corner here and I'm going to measure two inches from the bottom of the bra cup and two inches from the side of the bra cup because I want to have enough fabric to be able to sew. And I might make a mistake. So I give myself a little extra. So then I place my fabric and I touch the bra cup to make sure as it goes down and flows over the bra cup, there's enough fabric that's gonna go to the end of my cutting board. And with my measuring tape, I need another two inches. So I'm gonna make a mark at the two inches. That's the top of the bra cup. And I'm gonna feel her out to find the edge of it. And that's where two comes. And after the two inches, I'm gonna make another mark and slide her out and arrange your fabric to draw your line you're gonna cut, which I'm now cutting. Make sure you comment on my channel. And if you don't ring that little bell on the top to get notified of my next video, after you subscribe, please, so that you get notified of my next little crappy thing I do or anything else on my coronavirus series. And you didn't have to buy fabric to make this. You can use something you have around the house, like, you know, maybe a tie-dye shirt. That would be cool. But don't use polyester, because do you really want to breathe through polyester? I think not. Natural materials like cotton and wool naturally repel viruses. I had to find that out on the internet, but I did. So fold over your fabric into a half and then another half, so it's quarters. And at the tip, we're going to press it really hard with our finger. We can iron it. Hey, I like to do things fast. Then open it up. Find the center right there. Fold your fabric in half and add an inch and a quarter and make a dot. And from your little center point, we're going to give him a little dot too. We're using our trigonometry skills and we're going to make a dart. And one and a quarter inch to the other side too. So line them up, Dano, and draw. Good enough for government work. If I used a fabric that had a bright pattern on it, I would have put the right sides together when I folded it. So we do the exact same thing on the other side. And after you do both of these lines, let's just do it on the other side to make it easier for you. Draw your lines so they're on both the front and the back. So that's what it looks like. And now we're going to fold it again. Make sure your little teepee is looking at you. And so one and a quarter inches. on both sides with the lines drawn. And I have done these lines just with a lead number two pencil. You know, we are improvising. We're using what's in our house right now. And now the other side. It's Groundhog Day. And so this is what it looks like. And just sew from the point down. You can certainly do this by hand but I really just want to show you this method. You do it any way you want to. And perfection, we're making darts, and this is good enough. Keep going. Let's play darts. Wee. 
And because I made those lines on both sides, it's so easy to do this. You just line it from the point again and aim, shoot, fire to the other end. Dun chum. Aim for the nipple. And then we're going to put it around just to make sure it's not too big. I did a good enough job, which I did. This is fine. Yay. And so with your prong fastener, which are two parts, then I just use this one. Straighten it and put it end to end on your ruler. This happens to be seven inches. And on the bias of your fabric, you can make a line in the direction of the bias of your fabric because that way you'll have some pull for when you make your curve. And because I'm sewing it, I need extra room on each side. So I'm bringing in about another inch. And make your line and cut it. Clip job. And remember, you can pause this video anywhere you want. So you get to each of the steps. It looks complicated, but step by step, it won't be. You are making a casing for the nose clamp. So if you want to, you can fold it in like this, press them. And that is what professional sewers do. But I am not. So take your metal fastener and put it in the center. See where that is. You want it symmetric. And where it ends up is where you're going to put your cut fabric with this folded under like that because that's going to be the sleeve where this thing gets threaded through. You got to either glue that or sew that in. I'm going to sew it. And after you get one side sewed in, then you go to the other side for your casing. You could do this by hand, but I did it with a machine. And while you're sewing, make sure you stretch it because you want to make sure it fits really great on that fabric. And with a little help from my friend, Lucinda, we designed this and made this for you. And she brought her sewing machine and helped me sew because it got a little difficult for me. So snip those threads. That's what your sew job looks like. And with our fastener, we're now going to thread it in. Be careful. Okay. It's going to want to poke out. It's got to go around the curves so you can bunch it up to get it through. This is just how you would thread elastic through a project. So bunch, hold it tight, and pull. And keep going. Oh, I feel it. She's coming around the mountain. Peekaboo! And grab it with your teeth a hole. But not too far. You might have to push it back through. You're going to want to center that piece because a strong part is going to be in the middle. So you can feel underneath the fabric where the edges of that is. And they're right here. That's great. It's pretty much in the center. The edge of the metal is right here. So we got plenty of room to sew. But I see on this side, it's sticking out. So I'm holding it. I don't want it to move, but I'm going to cut it. So snip that metal. Now we're going to sew. Give those threads a snip. So this is the part that's going to be on your face. And this is the part with that soft fabric that's going to be on the exterior. So let's put our right sides out and cover it and feel it. <laughs> we need to feel how it's going to fit. So I'm touching it. Oh yeah, that's great. It works well. So flip it over. And now we're going to push all that extra fabric best that we can to make nice little edges because we're going to wear this on our face. Inside it goes, inside it goes, all around. And so spend a little time on this because you want it to look nice. And then we're going to pin it because we're going to sew it. So I take a pin and I pin it. And go all around and pin. Just like that. And so to make it really nice, I gather a piece in like that, hold it tight, and I'm going to grab the next piece of fabric and hold it tight. That's going to give you a cleaner looking fit. And pin tightly because you want it to fit. It makes it easier for when you want to gather. You already know you've centered it. And so now we're just going to trim on the inside all that extra fabric. So just go around. And you know, you could have used a hot glue gun for just about this entire project, but 
Lucinda was here and she was helping me today. So that was wonderful. With a little help with your friends, you can make these for your kids, your family, yourselves. And wouldn't somebody love to have an N95 mask made with love by you? I think so. What a thing to do if you decide you want to stay quarantined in your own home. Tell your mask is made. So now it's time to add your head strap, which I use a bra strap for. But some bras don't have the length to go all the way around your head. The best length is 12 inches or so. So I have to sacrifice another bra for this. So you're gonna to want to cut the entire strap. And that is 12 inches. And you can always make it bigger. Because of the adjustable thing that comes right with a bra strap and hides under your hair. Is that perfect or what? And a tip, some bra straps don't have any fabric underneath the loop. So you can just sew it on like that. But I was lucky this one did. So on the edges of your mask, you're gonna put the fabric and you're gonna sew that on. Make sure the buckle is facing up so you have easy access if you want to adjust it. Strap on, so strap on. Metal on top. And I'm pulling to adjust it tighter. It's so easy. <laughs> How's that? And fit it to the bridge of your nose and your face shape and then fix your hair. And if you want it firmer around your face, you can add another strap wherever you like. And I thought using the elastic from these present things would be a real easy way if you wanted to make it tighter because they're so easy to find. You might have some in your house already. Depending on your face shape, you might want to adjust your mask. And let's say you have a very narrow chin, which I do. You can also add elastic to the bottom, which I think is ingenious. Lucinda thought this up. Because even if you were to have an N95 mask and it didn't fit down there, you would not get the same protection as you would with your homemade mask. So now I'm adding citric acid. In my research, I found out that citric acid is one of the active ingredients in an N95 mask. This is the extra step that I want to take, but don't get that stuff in your eyes. It can irritate them. So I'm adding a tiny bit of this. And with a tiny bit of scantness, it's going in there. And with the bottom sign down, I'm gonna fit it inside of my mask. I know it's too big, but that citric acid is sitting in here in the bottom. So I'm gonna eyeball it to cut this. This is gonna be my liner. And we're cutting it. One side and then the next. and then the top. If you did what I did, you might have lost a lot of it. So I'm adding some more and I'm gonna glue it. And with any glue, just glue the sides, just a little bit. Make sure it covers all the edges. Cause you want a tight seal for the citric acid. Close her up. Done. And since the pointiest part of your bra is the top, I'm flipping it over and this is how I'm gonna wear it. And you might bring out the kids and you can make a lot of these disposable liners for every single day of your planned self quarantine. I mean, you're gonna be in the house anyways. Why not have an arts and crafts project? Make sure you comment on this video because if you don't comment, it's not gonna go around the world and help other people to learn how to make this. So share it. Stick it everywhere you can think of because I think this might really help a lot of people and that's why I did it. I'm Rebecca Brand. Subscribe to my channel and let's keep making great recipes in life like a recipe for an N95 mask to keep you and your family safe. Thanks Lucinda for helping me. <laughs>